Hello, I'm Jennifer Garapi, the pet therapist. I tell you what your pet would say if they could talk. So today is part two of our discussion of gastric ulcers in dogs and cats. And today what we want to talk about is how do you treat gastric ulcers and how do you prevent them? And you'll see that they're very closely intertwined. So in the last video, you may remember that we talked about um, ulcers being caused in, in a lot of cases by something called a helicobacter infection, which is secondary to the immune system of um, a cat or a dog's gut being compromised. So today we're going to talk about um, if you were to take me, a dog or a cat, if you were to take me to your traditional vet and I had a helicobacter infection, your traditional vet most likely would, provide, would prescribe antibiotics. But if you took me to a holistic vet, they most likely would not. And why not? Well, because they have some other tricks up their sleeves. And what they know is that a helicobacter infection is really not necessarily something to be feared. It's actually a sign or a symptom of something going on underneath. It's really like a barometer of my immune system. And so it's this opportunistic bacteria that's taken over and it could be due to too many antacids prescribed to me over time, um, too many H2 blockers, um, a biologically incorrect diet, or other meds that your traditional vet has been prescribing. So <clears throat> if, I'm, uh, if I'm looking at this situation, what I want you to do is to put on your detective hat as my pet parent to try to figure out what might have been causing these ulcers. And this is also just an excellent way um, as a pet parent for you to think about what's in your home and life that could potentially cause ulcers in the future. So the first one is emotional stressors. Have I recently been adopted, especially from a shelter where there's just so much stress on a pet? Um, do I sit in a crate for eight hours a day? Or am I constantly being chased, poked, or prodded by a small child or by another dog or cat in the family? Second thing is my diet. Does my diet support my immune system? Now, if you're only feeding me dry kibble, that means you're feeding me a very highly processed dead diet, which is causing nutritional stress on my system. And pesticide residues are another one, most notably glycophosphates. They are found in almost every conventionally grown fruit, grain, and vegetable. Factory farmed animals, they require a significant amount of antibiotics, and then they cause um, antibiotic resistance as they go up the food chain. Third thing to look for is environmental stressors. So that nice cushy pet bed that you bought me uh, might have PBDEs in it, which is something that's used as a flame retardant. Uh, household chemicals and cleaners that I'm getting on my paws and then I'm licking off. Um, outdoor pesticides and fertilizers. Plastic food bowls. Think about BPA in your um, being banned, right, in your plastic bottles. Um, all sorts of chemicals in plastic. And also tap water. You should be feed, um, giving me filtered water. So, um, a fourth thing that could be causing my ulcers uh, would be traditional vet practices. There's a tendency among traditional vets to over vaccinate. Now over vaccinate doesn't mean no vaccination. Be very careful when I say that. Over, over vaccination is too many vaccines. And also unnecessary antibiotics and dewormers because those are all upsetting my um, digestive tract and they're negatively affecting my gut's biome. So if you take me to a holistic vet, they're going to be asking you all sorts of questions um, to look into those areas that we just talked about. 
And they're also going to prescribe me things that um, are not, um, you know, synthetic drugs. So some examples would be um, berberine, which is a compound found in plants, or Oregon grape root, or bismuth, or deglycerinated uh, licorice, certain forms of aloe, specific strains of probiotics, mastic gum, which is a resin from the mastic tree, and a whole bunch more homeopathic and traditional Chinese medicine remedies. So preventing these ulcers in the future would be to look at all those areas that we discussed. Are you feeding me a species appropriate non-GMO organic diet? Are you decreasing the number of toxins in my home and yard? Are you giving me, when I go to the vet, are they giving me the least toxic and the lowest therapeutic dose um, necessary for whatever ails me? Instead of automatically revaccinating me, are you asking the vet to take a blood sample and do a titer and see what immunity I have left in my system? Are you doing what you can to decrease the stress in the home and in my life in general? And are you giving me adequate um, but not um, extreme amounts of exercise? These are all things that you can do to um, help prevent ulcers. So thank you very much for watching. If you would like to join an amazing group of pet parents um, and learn even more about pet health and pet behavior, then type the word champions in the comments and we'd be happy to add you to the Facebook group, um, Pet Champions, which is a closed group just for um, special pet parents like you. Thanks so much. Have a terrific rest.